Good morning, this is Dr. House yet again, and in the next couple of weeks I'm going to be bringing you a series of tutorials on modding the Source Engine, aimed specifically at the absolute beginner. And I thought we'd start with something simple tonight and do a bit of basic decompiling. Now, obviously we're going to need something to decompile first, so let's do what everybody else does and swipe something off Game Banana. Let's see what's in the old oddities contest. Ooh, what's this? So let's go ahead and download this and re-upload it without crediting anybody. Well, yeah, you really shouldn't do that. But uh, anyways, you find a uh, model that you want. You download that. And once you have it downloaded, extract that biatch. And navigate to the Models folder, Weapons, and you'll see a bunch of files in here. Now anything that starts with V usually indicates it's a view model. And a view model, in case you don't know, is what you see in first person. As for these files that start with W, those are world models and player models. World models are whenever you drop the weapon on the ground. And that's what you see. And player models are if you go into third person or if you see another player carrying a weapon. That's what a player model is. But just go ahead and extract everything right now to your desktop or wherever is convenient for you. And, um, well, obviously we're going to need a decompiling program first. And me, personally, I keep two programs on my machine at once. Hooch's version of fixed MDL decompiler and studio compiler. And the reason for having two on my computer at once is because, more often than not, if one of these doesn't get it, the other one will. And you can get either of these programs from one of these fine websites right here I've linked to in the description somewhere. So, um, you can download either one of those. And I'll try to go through the setup of each of these real quickly. With MDL Decompiler, you need to put the program in your source SDK directory. Let me show you. Um, First off, um, it's usually going to be in C program files or program files x86, and then Steam, Steam apps, username here, source SDK, bin, episode 1, bin, and that is where you want to put MDL decompiler. As you can see, I've got like 15 different versions, or more like 4 in here that I really don't need, but whatever. And um, as for Studio Studio Compiler, you can you can put that executable absolutely anywhere, but you have to configure your Steam directories up here. And you'll see that up here you need to put your Steam game directory, which is going to be um, Program Files Steam Steam Apps, and then your username, and then SDK Tools is going to be Source SDK. Ben episode one Ben just like us just like uh, we went over before and uh, unfortunately if you use the browse function and with either of these it uh, tends to crash so you may just have to manually type in the directories here like so on anyway um, so I guess now we can begin the decompile process. First off, with either of these, you want to make sure that both of these boxes are always checked before you decompile. It just makes things easier in the long run. With uh, Hooch's MDL decompiler, it's very simple. You just choose your input model file up here. It's the file that you want decompiled. And we'll just choose this view model of an MP5 for now. And then down here, you choose where you want it to be extracted to. And I'll just create a whole new folder for the sake of extracting, call it MP5K. And uh, select that. And when you hit extract, pray to God that it actually succeeds. And I'll be damned, it actually did at that time. Well, that surprises even me. 
And if you're using Studio Compiler, you would go to the Model Decompile tab right here. Same principles as uh, this one, only with the output directory, you will most likely have to manually type in that directory. Anyway, uh, that should be all you need to know about that. Now, um, just for the sake of demonstration, if for whatever reason your MDL decompiler crashes when trying to extract a view model, something that I learned recently which can help you if you're having trouble with uh, view models is you extract the world model first. And if that does it right, then you extract the view model directly on top of it. And it works. And uh, ironically enough, sometimes if you try to extract the world model first, it won't work, but you have to extract the view model first. It's really just trial and error. <clears throat> At any rate, we're done with this. And um, let me show you the results of this decompile. You'll see a lot of uh, files in here called SMD. And SMDs represent both animations and models. Most of these are just going to be bones that are animated. <clears throat> However, one of them is going to be what's called a reference file. And that's the only file with an actual model in it. Sometimes you can have more than one reference file, but uh, anyway, an easy way to tell which one is a reference file is look for the largest file size and it's very often called ref or reference or um, in this case it might be called mp5 or something like that um, now as for this file mdld compiler this is the qc now um, if you take for instance the default ak-47 in counter-strike that weapon requires a model, it requires textures and animations and some scripts in order for it to fully function as a weapon in game. And you might think of a QC as a way to put all of these things together in a uh, coherent, in one coherent place. For instance, down here in the sequences, these are the animations. Um, the material lines here specify where your materials are going to be, and then you've got your reference SMD up here. Um, I'll get much more into detail with this later. But uh, for right now, since we're done with all that junk, we can get into the real meaty part of the tutorial. So, see you next time.